Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back for another networking video. This is Bruce Hartbents, and we'll be going through Chapter 2 in the Packet Guide to Voice over IP. This week, we're going to be talking about uh, traditional telephony, and I'll do a series on this. But to sort of get us started, we're going to begin with your phone number. So without further ado, Chapter 2 in the Packet Guide to Voice over IP. So to get us started here, I'm just going to mention just briefly two of the big standards bodies or regulatory bodies that we have out there. Internationally, we have the International Telecom or Telecommunications Union Telecom Sector, more affectionately known as the ITUT, and they are responsible for a lot of standards that govern the public switch telephone network. Uh, they're global, formed by the United Nations. And they're really big on pushing standards for use in third world countries and things like that. For us, in the VoIP world, we're particularly interested in the codecs, which are defined in the G and H series. But we'll see that there are a lot more standards that they're worried about, including the one that we're going to talk about today. The FCC, or the Federal Communications Commission, is big here in the United States, obviously, formed by the Communications Act of 1934. They are very big in setting prices, deciding who can sell what, of course that makes it the regulation, and all the standards that we use here. Now the only reason I mentioned these two standards bodies this time is kind of, we're going to be talking about a particular standard today. To start us off we're going to work with this general topology. This entire diagram is you know sort of representative of the PSTN or the public switch telephone network. It is comprised of local exchange carriers, and inter-exchange carriers. And then the phones themselves are connected to what we call the local loop. And I'll talk about the local loop later on in future videos, but I just wanted to give you the architecture that we're going to be using here. So as we make a phone call, what we're worried about is actually the structure of that phone number. As I said, the ITUT is responsible for almost all of our standards governing communications on the public switch telephone network. And the biggie that we're going to talk about today is E.164, which describes the numbering plan for your phone number. In the United States, we follow something called the, the North American Numbering Plan, which isn't exactly E.164, but it is compliant with E.164. And so here in the States, that's our structure right there. We have a 1 followed by an N value, and then the X's, and then NXX, and then finally XXXX. Now the N can be a value anywhere from 2 to 9, and the X can be a value anywhere from 0 to 9. Now, of course, we're not adding the, the country codes in this case, but we are going to talk about uh, what each one of these sections means. The last thing that I want to mention before we leave this slide is that telephone numbers are highly geographic. That's because we're talking about circuits and where they run. And so um, when you pick up a phone number or when you dial a phone number, you're getting pretty close to that person's actual physical location, within limits, of course. So let's break this out a little bit wider. Uh, our first number there, actually the NXX of the first number, is the area code. And this also represents our geographic assignment. And we'll see what that means here in a second. You're all familiar with the idea of, of area codes. And this really points to the section of the country that you're calling to or from. The middle part of our phone number here is called the office code, also considered to be what we call the switch code. We're used to talking about, at least in the networking side, we're used to talking about routers and switches and access points and things like that. But on the telco side, there's also something called a switch. Probably the most popular telco switch is something called a class 5 switch. And one particular model is a 5ESS switch. Very popular. And these are the switches that connect phone calls. So that second set of numbers there identifies the office code. Now this is also another way of referring to your central office or your local exchange carrier. So the reason that you don't have to dial an area code when you're calling somebody that's close by is because you are in the same office code. And the last four numbers there identify the phone. Now we think of those as identifying the phone, but that's not really what they do. They really identify the port or circuit that that phone is connected to. And whether we're applying signals or 
sending ringing voltage down that line, you're actually lighting up a particular circuit that's attached to a switch at the office. Now, another related term is a LADA, or Local Access Transport Area. There are about 200 of these in the United States, and they loosely, very loosely, correspond to area code. And I'll tell you what I mean here in a second. But they're definitely not the same thing. So the United States is split up into these geographic areas. And to these geographic areas, uh, we assign or we have operating a local exchange carrier, which again is part of our PSTN and is the partner to the inner exchange carrier. Now, a picture's worth a thousand words, so here's an example from chapter two. This is figure 2.5. This is Kansas. And here on the left, you can see the two LADAs that are assigned, but in that same geographic area, we have our area codes. And because area codes are attached to our phone numbers, as population changes, densities change, things of that sort, it's really, really tough to, to keep area codes static. Here in western New York, we split area codes a couple of years ago because we have too many people in this one particular area code to come up with a unique number for everybody. So basically what we have today is that we talked about our phone number. And if you take the phone number and bring it back to the PSTN structure, we can sort of understand how we have a geographic assignment that goes down to a switch that actually winds up at a particular circuit or station number. And next time, we'll talk about what that local loop and what that local exchange connection is actually like. Well, thanks very much for stopping by. Thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of the video, and I hope you join us next time for uh, part two of this traditional telephony section. So this was chapter two in the voice over IP packet guide. You can stop by bruceharpens.com, look at the community configs that are building out there. Of course, the other playlists that we have here, packet of the week, and the core networking protocols and routing and switching. Thanks very much for watching, and may your packets always reach their destinations.